takes a lot of time though to come to that realization and acceptance, have acceptance around that and accept that you need to make a bigger change. So like I said, I was probably the most depressed I had ever been was in 2018. And then I finally left corporate in 2022. So it was a journey just like anything is to accepting and realizing what has to happen to be my healthiest and happiest self. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. I'm so excited for today's guest. We have Danette on the show. Welcome to Unlock Your Vitality. Hello, I'm excited to be here. Love it. So let's start with a little introduction of who you are, your journey to becoming who Danette is today. All right. I guess we'll go back to um, basically straight out of college. I went the corporate route, had the degree and decided I would, um, you know, check the boxes and got into corporate um, and stayed there for about 13 years. But during my time there, I was getting sicker and more burnt out and more depressed. And it was just really feeling like not the place that was going to let me be my best self. And being sick was just taking up a lot of time. And like I said, I was, I was depressed and kind of at the end of my rope. But in 2015, I had started traveling for work a bunch. So that allowed me to listen to podcasts in LA traffic. So I got turned (laughs) on to the Bulletproof podcast, which really kind of started me down the holistic um, wellness path and the biohacking path and just opened up a whole world of all these different healing modalities that were so different than um, what the host of doctors I was going to were telling me. And it was a really empowering feeling. And I just kind of got overtaken. I was became a total nerd about learning every single thing I could and got really empowered and loved the feeling of being able to actually do things that moved the needle on my health journey and actually made me feel better. So as I came closer to the end of corporate and and brave about leaving that environment. I just knew that I wanted to help people have the same feeling and heal Mm -hmm. and feel empowered on their own, on their own journey. So that's how I got to the place of launching my own business just last year and getting out of corporate America. And I kind of did everything at once. This is definitely part two for my life, I guess, chapter two in Danette's life. So I quit corporate, I got divorced, I sold my house, and I currently live on the road in my van with my two pups. And um, I'm doing the health coaching thing on the road and just kind of starting over. I love it. What an empowering story for people who are, I'm sure, feeling what you were feeling when you were sitting in that corporate life. I've been there, not in corporate, but in the tech startup world. And it can be really difficult in that space to understand that we have a choice. I wonder how you, as you were, you know, getting more and more sick and you mentioned depressed and sick, how did that like kind of light bulb go off? And was it just getting worse and worse and so bad to the point that it was like, okay, I really need to make a change? Or were there little nudges that your intuition was speaking to you in different times? Can you share a bit more about that process? Absolutely. I think I was where a lot of people were. And I felt like all my time was being taken up with going to doctors. And I'm naturally a person that's just very inquisitive and asks a lot of questions and wants to know the answer and the why behind it, which I know is not often what doctors will provide. They can't often give you the answer of why something is happening to you. And that just became more and more unacceptable to me as I got more frustrated and more of my time kept going to, you know, trying different doctors and driving all over big cities, which takes a lot of time and effort and energy. And you're putting all this energy into trying to find a solution and it's making you sicker because you're, you're more stressed out putting all this time into something that's not providing any results. So I think it was just a culmination of everything making me, you know, 
very sick, literally very Mm -hmm. sick and literally very tired um, that I was like, there has to be a different way. And then stumbling up on podcasts and books was really the light bulb moment where I'm like, there is a different way. This might be something that finally gives me the answers I'm looking for. I love that. And so what were some of the, I guess, maybe physical or was it energy like symptoms that you were feeling back then? And how did some of the changes that you implemented, whether it was through listening to podcasts or through the health coaching that then started to make a difference? Yeah. So I had been really sick since I was a kid and they always diagnosed me with strep throat and gave me antibiotics and come to find out I had had mono, which then turns into EBV, which is a a virus that recurs over and over, especially if you get tired or stressed out. That's when it reactivates and you get sick with all the EBV symptoms again, which are they're very strep-like and flu-like, so they really take you down. Those on top of, they were starting to merge into other things. I had a host of, you know, every infection you, you can think of as far as like UTIs and strep and yeast infections. And it just felt like my system wasn't quite right and I was getting anything and, and everything. So that made me look Um, into gut health specifically, because even back then we were starting to figure out that the gut is connected to everything, including the brain and depression, as well as, you know, absolutely affecting your immune system. So I started with a bunch of different protocols. And I think anybody that's on a health journey knows that you try a bunch Mm -hmm. of different things before you find out what works. So I would say I'm still very much in my own health journey. I think we always are, but nutrition would be the biggest thing that from taking different foods out and adding different foods in like probiotic foods and foods that aren't usually in the standard American diet um, started to shift me out of that place where I was getting infections and going down with sicknesses like every one or two months. And I got to a place where I had some some breathing room um, and was definitely seeing improvements. And then it just kept getting better as I've learned so much more over the last, it's been 10 years now. Yeah. I love that you said you're still on that healing journey because I feel the same. And I think a lot of times when we're in this space, it can feel like we need to have it figured out in order to be able to help others. And I often believe and think that continuing to have our own journey just helps make us that much better at helping other people because we have to continue keep digging. And I went through a journey of like gut health and um, SIBO and all that. And then more recently Mm -hmm. found out it was because of Hashimoto's and I found it very, very early. And so because I'm so in tune to my body, I was like, this energy is just not right. And like all my hormone levels are actually okay, but I did have antibodies. And so it's like in the medical term or in the Western side, I don't really, they would call it like early onset Hashimoto's. And when I went to the endocrinologist, they were like, yeah, okay, cool. So just like come back when your levels are at, you know, whatever that their marker is, and then we'll put you on medication for the rest of your life. But I was like, we found it early. Like, this is amazing. And I'm working with an FNTP in my own journey to, you know, change the things I'm eating and understanding it better and understanding the energy levels. But I was reflecting at the fact that it's continuing to have to find our own answers just really helps us be better for the people that we can help around us. Absolutely. And I think it's an approachability thing too, because to look at somebody that looks like they have it all figured Mm. out. I know when I was looking for my own health coaches and nutritionists, I liked that they were still going through something themselves. They were still learning. They were curious and open to, you know, ideas. So yeah, I think it definitely makes a huge impact. Yeah. So we've talked about more of like the physical symptoms. Can you talk about the stress impact and the emotional aspect of it? You also obviously have made like a big 360 in terms of all aspects of your life. How did those things play into not feeling, I guess, your most vital self at the time? Yeah. So I think when you're, you know, physically not your best self and going down with things like infections, you're tired and all you want to do is sleep. That's what your body needs is rest, especially if it's not getting the other things it needs. So I got very used to 
being in bed. Luckily, even with my corporate job, I could make my own schedule so I could sleep late. But then when you're trying to rest, there's also that society pushed that, you know, that you're not doing enough and it's just not real ingrained in us to take that time you need or to rest a lot or heal yourself that way. So it was impacting, you know, definitely my relationship. It seemed like I was always in bed. I was always depressed. I didn't want to go out or have much of a social life, especially because if you go out and you eat in restaurants and you drink alcohol, then you feel even worse. So just kind of impacted all those avenues. And I knew it was, you know, corporate was the main thing. I wasn't happy at my job. And if a big section of, you know, your wheel of life, like career where you spend eight hours a day, isn't going well, that impacts your health as well. So yeah, it takes a lot of time though, to come to that realization and acceptance, have acceptance around that and accept that you need to make a bigger change. So like I said, I was probably the most depressed I had ever been was in 2018. Um, And then I finally left corporate in 2022. So it was a journey just like anything is to accepting and realizing what has to happen to be my healthiest and happiest self. Mm, Yeah. I also took a long time to, from knowing to actually making it happen. And I think a lot of times when you're on social media or just in the world, it can be really easy to see the after. And I appreciate that you mentioned that timeline because in our like society standard, four years might be like, what? This is insane. But it does take time for us to fully come into ourselves and accept and understand and then also decide on what that means and how to approach a decision and how to go back or sorry, move forward into something totally new. Because I think too often we're used to just things happening really, really quickly. And that's not how they actually happen in real life. Yeah, I think on social media, you hear a lot, whether it's they quit alcohol or they quit their job, it it always sounds like it was a wake up or a boom moment or overnight, it was just, bam, they went for it, which I'm sure happens. But I think there's also a lot of stories where you take your time and you have to be gentle with yourself and come to a a slower realization. Yeah, a lot of compassion and grace for ourselves, for sure. Absolutely. I'm super curious about the van life. I have traveled. I've been very fortunate to grow up traveling a lot my whole life. We moved around a lot because of my dad's job and travel is a big part of my life. During the pandemic, my husband and I, we decided to just travel around a little bit, not too much. Obviously, there was a lot of places that was closed and we wanted to be safe about it, but having just places to be able to just be more outside was so healing in a time where there was just so much fear and it was so scary. And I've always been very curious about the, I guess, nomadic and van life aspects of what it could look like. What does that mean? And how does it feel? And I'm curious if you want to share more about it. Absolutely. I love talking about van life. It was something that came overnight. Not a lot has come overnight (laughs) in my life, but (laughs) um, I kind of had about a month where I just didn't know after my divorce what I was going to do. I had lived in cities literally up and down both coasts and I felt like I had done the city thing and I didn't know where I wanted to move or settle next. And I was talking to my mom and we started talking about RVs and maybe the opportunity to just kind of move around. And I knew I couldn't drive an an RV in a truck and that whole thing. But somebody (laughs) somewhere had said something about living in vans. And it just came to me. And I was like, I think I could do a van. I think I could have, you know, everything with me in my bed. And I wasn't even a huge camper, but van seemed cushy enough (laughs) that even I could handle it. And um, 72 hours after that conversation with my mom, I owned my ProMaster. It was already built out by professional in California. So I didn't have to do any of the building because that's not my thing. (laughs) So I got it built out and then hit the road about a month later. And I stayed with friends first. I stayed in people's driveways. And I decided if I just move around the country to different friends and, you know, kind of 
see my college friends again and see, you know, friends that I already have. That would be fine if I never left somebody's driveway was kind of what I was thinking. And then in October, it got very cold and I didn't have heat in the van. So that's when I went to Arizona for my first summer and or my first winter. Yeah, just really started to love being able to work with my doors wide open looking at mountains and cactuses and it allowed me to get outside so much more and take up activities that I never really dreamed or thought I would be doing. Um, I was never a big runner and about six months into the van life thing, I became a trail runner just because there was so many beautiful trails. I didn't want to leave my dogs for very long and like go on three hour hikes. So I decided to <laughs> to run literally for time and um, just got really, really into it. So yeah, it's opened up a crazy world and the nomad community is probably the biggest blessing out of it. There's so many people doing the van life and living nomadically and living on the road that even at 38, I found new friends, which is always, I think, hard to do the older you get, but there's a huge community of nomads, which has been amazing. I love to hear that because I do think that as we get older, community is harder to find. And I also think it's harder to make these kinds of choices the older you get and to kind of go against the grain and decide like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. How about you mentioned you weren't a big camper. I'm curious about how you felt from a, like maybe a safety perspective, like the first time being in your van in like total nature in different places. How did you handle that? Yeah, I expected to be very freaked out. I'm not a person that like loves the dark. <laughs> um, like I said, I had never really camped, but I had traveled a bunch alone. I'd done like international trips alone and I traveled alone for work a lot. So as far as safety wise, being in a van and living in it, I felt like was no different than just having like my spidey senses out that I always have out traveling as a solo female, even for mm -hmm. work going into hotels. You just, as a woman, you act different. You know, you look around you and you're kind of always assessing things. So I feel like that was just second nature to me and definitely helped as I got on the road as a single female, like living in my van. And then the forest just feels very safe compared to like being in the city in a hotel. You're out there. I do have my dogs. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. guard dogs, <laughs> but <laughs> but it does help just to have them. And I just found it to be so peaceful. And I had no sleepless nights or anything. I never really felt uncomfortable. So hmm. I was surprised, but happily surprised. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's beautiful. And then what about the whole aspect of wanting to have a holistic lifestyle and especially nutrition and all those things on the road. How do you handle that? And I'm sure teach clients that also feel like it would be really difficult anytime that you're like not in your house or out and about, it's harder because there is maybe more temptations for like convenience to be eating out or just like quick things on the road aren't necessarily healthy. How do you handle that? Yeah. So um, it's really nice. I actually now think I don't know how I'll go back to like normal life and not having my fridge and my freezer and like the ability to cook like right behind my driver's seat because I feel like <laughs> I eat healthier now that I can, you mm -hmm. know, literally I can pull into a McDonald's parking lot, and make my own food and get back on the road. So mm -hmm. I feel like I have a, a leg up on the convenience factor, but it's helped me with clients just because I have to cook a pretty quickly just to conserve electricity and usually water and stuff. So I can't have, you know, the oven going and four different pots on a stove. So I've become really good at cooking one pot meals or one pan meals. Um, and I think no matter where you are in life or where you live, whether you have a family or you're single or whatever your situation is, the quicker and easier we can make healthy meals, the happier we are, all are. So being able to share resources and recipes for things that I'm doing to cook healthy and quick meals um, with my clients has been something where, where we're the same and where it matches up and translates pretty well. 
Mm, I love that. And with the different clients that you work with or within this transition of starting your business, what are some of the things you're really focusing on? What are some maybe big like themes that you're seeing people struggle with in the ways that your clients are? Um, Because holistic health and being a health coach can look so many different ways. I'm curious to hear a little bit more about the things you focus on. Yeah. So I think all the clients I work with have one thing in common. We're all about between 30 and 40 years old. And we all, you know, I'll say it as millennials because it's kind of the generation. Um, but we've watched our parents go through some really hard health things and a lot of preventative diseases like diabetes are being diagnosed. And we're watching our parents kind of go through that and go on to a host of different um, medications and then deal with side effects. And just personally, my parents, I've seen them, you know, struggle with some of those, those side effects and things where they're not necessarily enjoying their, you know, best years. So anyone that's come to me has maybe had a marker show up on a blood test or something that shows them that they're going that same way as their parent and they want to do something to prevent it. So it's kind of riding the ship before it gets too far down the path. And they're very interested in doing things holistically and nutrition wise that can, like I said, right that ship and get them on a a sustainable path of doing healthier things where they're just going to get, you know, 1% healthier every year than 1% sicker. So it's Mm -hmm. been a lot of preventative things with nutrition, um, sleep, definitely stress management, because that's been something that's impacted my life so heavily. And then, of course, movement. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are maybe like your top tips when it comes to that 1% shift, whether it is a little bit of all those things that you mentioned in terms of nutrition, movement and stress prevention or mindfulness? What are some of the things that you kind of always recommend your clients to adopt? So I think it's really meeting them where they are. And it's not always the same thing for everybody, but let's just take movement. So whatever that looks like for them, if they are stationary at a desk, at a computer and currently getting, you know, two, 3000 steps a day, it's how can we push that to the next level? Is it 3,500? Is it 4,500 steps? Whatever that goal is, that's going to feel good for them. That's going to feel achievable and is sustainable. So putting in whatever kind of goal in those different categories, that's actually going to Um, stick with them and they're going to be able to accomplish so that they get that momentum of those healthier habits. And even after our work ends, they can, you know, continue to add on and continue down that path where, you know, five years down the road, they're 10% healthier instead of stagnating or going backwards. Yeah. I think it's so important to talk about those like very small, but long-term, so meaningful changes that this whole 1% shift methodology is about because so often when people come to us, they might already be, as you're saying, like seeing some markers or some things that is ringing alarm bells, or maybe they're like even further down and they want really, again, quick changes and are feeling that frustration too. And I think that There's, I mean, we talked a little bit about this. I don't know why this is a theme that's coming up again, I guess, but just that time that it takes and the fact that it's okay that things take time and to be okay with, okay, I'm going to look at my life and see where are the small changes that I can make so that it is sustainable because I've gone through so many different protocols and things, and some of them were really not. And as a result of that, I went totally the other way once I stopped those and then needed to find that balance again. And so making sure for anybody listening that is interested in having some kind of shift, whether it is with how you're handling stress or the things we're eating or how we're moving, especially we're still in the beginning of the year. People made these like potentially really big changing goals and that it's okay for things to take time and to go little by little and just step by step. Yeah. Yeah. And I love when people have goals that aren't working or, you know, but there's still something that they made that goal for themselves and it's important Um, and you can pivot it or amend it or shift it to still 
get them where they want to go. But like you said, that theme of it, it just taking longer and really being patient with yourself. And maybe there's other things that have to happen before you get that, mm-hmm. you know, get to the, the goal or the place that you, you know, really are yearning, yearning to be at. So mm-hmm. yeah, just again, taking time and, and really giving yourself grace to get there is, is a theme that I, I love and has always been a theme in my life. Mm, Yeah. And in terms of how you're, I'm assuming that your stress levels are very different today than they were when you were in corporate America, but what are some of the things in which maybe it still shows up and how you're handling that stress, how you're managing it and what are the different tools? Because I think that sometimes people think once they make a big shift that the stress just won't be there, but it does show up in different ways. So how do you handle it? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's always stress in life. There's there's good stress and, and bad stress. And um, it's definitely something that you, I think you should strive to get rid of it completely because it's just, it's never going to happen. So stress in my own life has definitely changed. It's gone from corporate stress to now van life. And it's not so much stress has almost a bad connotation, but it is still stress. I have to figure out where to get water, where to do laundry where to park or travel to so the temperature is right and I'm not too hot or too cold. So it's just different. But I've adopted so many things in the last few years um, that help. And that's definitely being in nature and walking and being outside. You know, exercise is a huge stress reliever for me. And then things like breath work and meditation have become a major part of my morning routine just to get my anxiety down and my my stress level is kind of right for the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I'm curious in your journey of this van life, are you looking at different destinations as like potentially I'd want to settle there someday? Or is this something that you're like, I want to be on the road for a long time? So I definitely started out on a put my roots down somewhere finding mission and um, wanted to explore the smaller cities. So places like Bend and Sedona and Bozeman and Boulder. And as I did that and traveled to different places and found this huge community of nomadic people where there's really not a lot of loneliness. So it doesn't drive me to like find a place to settle down because I'm not lonely and I'm kind of surrounded by people and doing different things that keep me excited. So it's turned into more of an open-ended quest Mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily have an end date or any pressure on myself to get off the road anytime soon. That's beautiful. I love that. So we end every episode with a few questions, but before I get to that, where can people find you? How can they work with you? Share a little bit so they can know more about the things you're doing. So Instagram is kind of where I do everything. And as I launch more things, I'll be talking about more on Instagram. So that's my main one. And that's Danetta May. And yeah, I'm going to be launching um, my new product offering or program that I've been working on for the last year. And it's kind of been in beta with all my clients. So it's gotten to a place where it's um, something I'm really excited about and ready to launch. So yeah. Very cool. I love it. I have a really random thought about your name. I'm originally French. Do you have French people around you? No, I don't. But I often get asked if my name was French. So we have, um, I mean, it's funny because it's definitely not healthy, but we have a dessert that's called Denet. It's like a chocolate pudding kind of dessert. It's definitely healthier than what you would find in like a general American grocery store. It has like actual milk and not like powder or whatever, but Anyway, when, that's why at the beginning I had to ask you how to <laughs> pronounce your name because I'm like, your name is tied to a very fond childhood memories for me. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so funny. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to send you a picture after of the dessert. Oh, please do. <laughs> so the last few questions. The first one is, how do you unlock your vitality? I think walking has become something that I just like do not miss. It's become such a part of my day. So getting those 10,000 steps and moving my body definitely makes me feel the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I used to be a big runner and I found that as I'm getting older and also 
not fully from choice because of um, Hashimoto's. I've had to slow down a little bit, but walking and having longer walks has been really beautiful. It's a, yeah, it's something that we can all tap more into for sure. The next one is a funny one for you because I don't know what that looks like in a van, but I know that right now you're also in a pause from it, but what is on your nightstand? Let's do what that looks like in a van. (laughs) In the van. So I have this cool like cubby right behind my bed, which is what I call my nightstand. So um, I keep my mouth tape there, which I know is a weird one, but I tape my mouth closed at night to make sure I breathe through my nose. (laughs) I do the same. Oh, good. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But most people on here are probably like, what are you talking about? So maybe explain, (laughs) explain what that is. (laughs) So lots of people, especially when you're asleep and you're not paying attention, your mouth drops open for a variety of different reasons and you breathe through your mouth. And that creates a lot of problems, even like oral health and, and dental wise. That's why I started doing it. I haven't had a cavity since I started taping my mouth closed. So because it you keep your mouth closed and it stays a moist environment. None of that bacteria grows the same way as if you're breathing through your mouth and like drying it out all night. So yeah, weird, but super effective. (laughs) I love that. I do it because I started snoring out of nowhere. And so then realized that it's because I was, my mouth was open. And so very much started because my husband was like, what is happening to you? (laughs) And then I started looking at natural ways to stop snoring. (laughs) But I didn't know about uh, dental hygiene. That's super interesting. Yeah. Yep. So my mouth tape and my water bottle, because I'm a person that wakes up to get a drink as well. And then probably just my book or like my Kindle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the next question is, if you were to go back and tell your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say listen to your gut in all situations and listen to your intuition and just trust yourself and follow your gut and follow your dreams and that you deserve to be happy. Yeah, that's so beautiful. The last one is what are you saying no to these days? I just marked five months without alcohol and I didn't do it. I don't say sober because I don't want to take away from anybody that has an addiction or has struggled um, with alcohol, but um, it was more just something that I always felt like I did for society and to kind of blend in, Um, but I knew it didn't make me feel my best and I hated, hated being hungover Um, and I just wanted to see what it would do and how it would affect, you know, my health journey, my hormones, my gut health, everything. So I cut it out five months ago and I've just been slowly feeling better. Again, I think lots of people cut things out and they say, oh, overnight, I I feel better. I feel the difference. And it definitely wasn't like that for me. But as we're getting to like five and six months, I'm starting to, some of my brain fog is clearing and my energy is like getting better. And there's definitely some benefits that I'm pretty happy about. And just not being hungover is, is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. I feel like questioning your relationship with alcohol is something I'm hearing a lot more around, not necessarily in terms of having an addiction or anything like that, but more on the side of like, why am I doing it? And what is it bringing to me as you just suggested? And so I'm French, as I mentioned, and wine is a huge part of my culture and a part of my family. And also, I think was so normalized to be like, yeah, every night you have a glass of wine with dinner and it's just like a normal thing. And then about five, six years ago, I started like really looking at it. And now I always say that I basically get my like alcohol consumption in the two weeks that I go to France for the whole year (laughs) because I love a glass of wine with my food, with my family. And it's especially because my dad is like a big wine connoisseur. And so it's like very good wine. Yep. But then the rest of the year, I'm like, I really don't need this. (laughs) Wine is my like downfall. So I definitely get (laughs) being in France and, and wanting to have your glass of wine. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's been such a beautiful conversation. I'm so excited that we got to be connected and that you got to come on. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Yay. We'll see you guys next week.
Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you loved this episode as much as I did. If you are enjoying the show, please feel free to rate and review, share it with a friend. This is truly how we are able to grow. So whether you are listening on Kajabi directly, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, or on Google, any way that you can just share it with a friend and even through social media, letting us know what you loved about it, what you got out of the episode. And if you haven't yet, you can subscribe or rate and review depending on all the places that you get your podcasts. But I just wanted to say a big, big thank you if this is the first episode you've ever listened to or if you've been here for a while or if you've been here since the very beginning. Unlocking my vitality has been a beautiful journey into learning actually. And this podcast has really helped me learn through different people, through your feedback, through, yeah, just seeing and hearing beautiful women and the work that they're doing and sharing it with the world. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye.